It was just over 12 months ago when we first took a look at the Luba Robotic Lawnmower by Momotion. Forward tracking on, Momotion's been doing a little bit of tweaking in the background and they've recently released this Luba mower here. This is the Luba 2.0 and today we're going to have a look over it, we're going to set it up, we're going to try it out and we'll just see what all the fuss is about. Here in Australia, the Luba Robotic Lawnmower is available in three different grades. The Luba 1000, which covers up to 1000 square metres. The Luba 3000, which is actually this one here, as the name says, 3000 is 3000 square metres. And the one that we're going to set up today is actually still in the box here. That's the Luba 5000. So 5000 square metres or just over one acre. The other things we've got here today are the optional wall mount for the RTK sensor, but we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later, and also the garage cover for the charging station. One of the beauties about the Luba by Momotion is if you don't want to buy the optional garage roof or you don't want to buy the optional wall mount for your, what they call their RTK sensor here, you don't need to. In fact, everything you need to get this thing operating comes as standard. The others are just optional extras. So let's just have a quick look here now. So we've got our poles to our RTK sensor. We've got our power supply here in this box. So everything here is packaged really, really nicely. Uh, not excessive use of plastics, etc. It's very thoughtfully packaged. Everything's got a place that it goes. So in here, we've got some instructions. This is our 3D vision module. Now, we'll have a better look at that in a moment, but just keep in mind the last year's model didn't have that. So this is one of the big improvements on the Luba 2. So again, inside the box, now we've got the Luba. Very, very minimal, very, very minimal uh, setup is required. In fact, there's only two things to set on it. One is the front bumper, which we'll do in a moment, and the other is our vision sensor. So as I've just mentioned, everything you need to set this up is included. In fact, there's been some good significant improvements over last year's model as well. This year, it actually comes with spare blades. In fact, there's eight pieces there. Now, the blades on this machine are little razor blade design, but they are reversible. So each blade you can turn around and get more life out of. So that's a really handy feature as well. So spare pack of blades. Inside here, we find this little tool here. Now, this little tool also wasn't in the last generation of Luba, but this is our tool that we use to set up our machine. So the first thing we need to do is take this little cover off here. Pop them in. And we take this cover away. Although this machine also has GPS tracking, Momotion has also given the option here that you can actually put a sneaky air tag in here too if you want to, just for that extra bit of protection. So um, if you know, this battery goes flat or something happens along those lines, you can actually hide an air tag in there. So that's handy to know. So we'll grab our little vision sensor, our little googly eyes, our AI intelligence, and we'll stick them on there. So last year, this robot mower gave me vibes of a, of a race car. This year, all I'm seeing is uh, Wally, that kid's cartoon robot movie with these, uh, with these little eyes. So we just clip these two in here, very straightforward, white to white, black to black. And we use our same retained screws. Somewhere here I put a screwdriver, there it is. And we replace this panel with this vision module. Okay, that's one of the two steps. The next one now is our front bumper bar. So we'll just take him out of his packet there now. And he clips in this way. But we do have, first of all, we do have to clip in this little cable here first. There we go. And I believe we've got some screws that go in to hold it in as well. Now 
So next thing we want to do, we want to take one of the two supplied safety kill switch keys, if you will, and there's a slot here in the back. We'll pop him in. Okay, so now it's pretty much right to go to its charger. So let's set the charger up over here where I want to put it, and we'll start to uh, connect that part of it. It's important that when you're setting up a base station, it's on a firm, flat surface. Now that surface can be flat level grass. It can even be a hard concrete like this. Now, either way, it's best to secure this thing down. Now today, because I'm only setting this up for a, uh, a review purpose, I'm not gonna install it exactly here, but for the video, this is where I'm gonna set it up. So going forward, if you're going to set it up properly, I would strongly suggest mounting it to the floor, spending the time and uh, and getting it right. The next step in setting up our Luba mower here is probably one of the most critical steps of all. Because these mowers, unlike a lot of its competitors, don't require wire in the ground. So we don't need to run perimeter cables anywhere at all. These mowers run on an RTK signal. Now this is our RTK unit here. And again, all we do is we just mount this little antenna on the bottom of this round unit here. We mount it on either two things. We can either mount it on the supplied poles and position it next to our base station, or we can choose to mount it on the roof for a really neat professional installation. But it must, must, must have clear view of the sky to get all the right satellite signals to give these things the accuracy that they need. Because when they're set up correctly, these guys will have an accuracy of about one centimeter, which is quite phenomenal, really. If you find when you are positioning your RTK signal uh, antenna that it is too far away from where you wish to have your base station, they also include, the motion also include a second power supply and a longer cable. So rest assured, you're not limited to installing this exactly on the controller. So with all our power now connected to both our RTK signal satellite receiver and our base station, we'll notice that we've got a couple of lights flashing. So we've got Green flashing here, indicating not only power, but it's ready to be paired up. And the same deal here in the light, you'll see that down in here, there's a green light. So everything here is ready to go. So what we might do is, let's quickly throw the garage roof on, and show you how that looks, just to keep some of the sun, some of the heat off that machine while it's A, charging, B, stored, and also when it's raining. So as you can see, that does create quite a decent shady spot for that mower. So probably a smart investment in a hot climate like ours. The next step is to turn on our robot. So we'll turn them on, then we'll open our app. We'll pair him to the app. We'll make sure it's done any updates. And I guarantee there will be updates. I've just done an update on it now and it took about five or 10 minutes. Start recharging. Now we've got a fully recharged mower, we can now map out our mowing area. And now that's where the fun really kicks off because we actually mark out the area using our phone like a virtual joystick to control the mower. So all we do is obviously we open the app and from here we go click on create a map and we're going to create an area to mow. It'll prompt us through and from here on in we're going to leave the garage And we're going to click start mapping a task area create so that, as you heard there start mapping, mapping the task area so from here on in all we do is we just steer it left and right using the joysticks on the screen
Once we've mapped out our area, we need to create a pathway for this mower to go home. And all that basically is, is a specific, so we're gonna hit create, we're gonna create what they call a channel. And a channel is basically a road that you will set up for this machine to go back to its charge when it needs to. You set these up for each individual zone that you do. So all we do here now is click to create the channel. And all we're gonna do is just drive it exactly where we want it to go and it will always follow that pathway back to its charger. So for us, we're just gonna send it straight up there like that. Mapping complete, finish. So if it was to get low on battery anywhere in its zone, it knows exactly where home is. Because obviously if it's mowing and it needs charge, it'll go back and recharge. So that's good, we've got that done. So let's now set it up to actually mow this area. And again, that is really, really straightforward. All that happens on the app again, obviously you can create programs to suit whatever it is you wanna do. You can mow every day, every second day, three times a day, whatever you want to do. It does feature a built-in rain sensor, so if it starts raining, it'll send itself home until the rain's gone. So there's lots of good little features there. So let's just mow here now, and we'll select our area. And the area we're mowing is, this little's here, which is, uh, where are we? Select the task. 133 square meters, meters, and we can adjust our cutting height between 25 millimeters at the lowest all the way up to 70 at the highest. So let's set it at 30 millimeters. This grass isn't particularly long, but uh, that should trim it up just nicely. We can adjust the speed in which it mows. Again, if it's really long grass, you'd probably slow it right down. This is really short grass. So we might just rate, speed it up a little bit. We can also select how we want to mow, be it zigzag or cross checker pattern, etc. I'm just gonna go a standard zigzag mow. Uh, it's according to this it's gonna take us 32 minutes. So let's just see how it goes. So far, first impressions of the Luba 2. It is an impressive bit of kit. The flexibility of being able to change heights in different zones is a big plus. Not having perimeter wires in the ground is a big plus. It has a decent wide dual disc cutting system, saves time. The standout feature alone for me right now would have to be the 3D vision system here. It eliminates the need to do a lot of exclusion zones. In other words, with Luba 1, I would have had to exclude all these trees because it would have crashed right into them. This has the ability to see what's happening and maneuver around. It may on occasion just brush past one of the tree guards, but it's only a brush and then it adjusts and it goes right the way around beautifully. I did not feel the need to create zones for that. However, you know, if you had something that you wanted particularly to exclude, you can do that. This really should be on your shopping list if you are looking for a robot mower. I've been suitably impressed with number one and this one here has just lifted the game again. Anyway, guys, look, we'll wrap the video up here. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you do, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Aussie Lawn.